so we are at Storm King Brew Pub today in Minneapolis. Um, so it used to be the one fermentary and tap room spot, uh, and they bought it in Turnkey. So inbounds right down the road, and then number 12 is right next door, and then just down the road here is Target Field. I don't know if we can see that yet, but and then on the other side of Target Field is Target Center. Right on the corner, you got Fulton. And then you just down the way, you got Modest, Freehouse, uh, new winery, Axe Bridge is in the area too. And there's a distillery called Stillheart. So there's quite a bit to do here. Uh, so yeah, this is our first time being here since it's been Storm King. It's only a couple weeks old. Uh, so yeah, let's go find out what it's like. So we just got back from Storm King. Uh, we just walked back to our apartment. Uh, it's pretty close by for us. Uh, we thought about doing the recap outside, but uh, it's a little bit windy outside today. Gas station across the street has a car wash that has a very loud uh, dryer that is also a bit of a nuisance. So yeah, this was our first time being there since it was one. Uh, so it's kind of a, been there before, but it's a bit of a makeover. Uh, my first impression was uh, just a little bit less decorative than it was as one. And then on top of that, it was also just very loud and I kind of looked around and there is no sound absorption. It is a brew pub, but instead of having uh, being seated and having your order taken, it's a bit more like a brewery setup uh, where you just go kind of find an open seat and then you go up to the bar and order, which our only problem with that was just the geometry of the space and where at the bar that you went to order the line especially being six feet in between people right now it just kind of like you were stuck in between a couple tables and you would have people like bumping getting out to try and go to the bathroom like while you're standing and so it is a little bit of a cluster mess there uh but yeah to start off with for beer uh, I ordered the Jam IPA, which was a West Coast IPA and a bit more of a red color, so it was a bit more maltier, high in bitterness, uh, pretty piney with a bit of citrus to it. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. So I had the She Gone, which was a rye lager. Rye in beer uh, is actually something we were just talking about and have been talking about recently, and so that's kind of what made me want to get it first and because when we were talking about it like I talked about how I started learning how to pick up on rye in beer and I kind of do for the most part like that the flavor profile that it, it brings to different beers yeah because we like less than a week ago we had a hazy IPA from transient yeah transient artists and ales um, somewhere out in Michigan. And yeah, it was, it was just kind of like, we tasted it and I was like, oh, there's something different about this. And didn't say on the can, but then I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, there's rye in this. Like, that makes sense. And then we were kind of reminiscing about some, like how we haven't had a beer with rye in a long time. And then uh, some of the older beers that we had with rye. And um, I was thinking about ordering it, but then she ordered first, so then I, I'm true. I just order something different after that. I I, I really enjoyed the rye lager too. Like I think I, I really enjoy that like pumpernickel like taste to it. Like and it was also just like crisp and refreshing, which with its color I wasn't quite expecting. Right. Um, and I expect with the barbecued meat it also just paired really well. Which speaking of the barbecue, uh, I ordered I ordered a half rack of ribs. And then I got some fries and some baked beans to go with it. Uh, so yeah, the ribs were a little bit tough to pull off the bone, 
Uh, but once they came off the bone, they were they weren't like tough to chew on or anything. And I think it could have been seasoned a bit more. Uh, the flavor that was there was good. I just think uh, a little bit more salt could have gone a long way. And then the fries were a bit of a disappointment. Uh, they were kind of soft and floppy. Uh, and then I got the beans I got. They weren't bad, but they were not what I was expecting. I was expecting more of a traditional baked bean, but it almost tasted like I was eating chili, which just really caught me off guard, especially uh, it's like, um, it's 82 degrees out and I wasn't like, I don't know, chili was not what I was looking for, but it tasted fine. It just was not what I was expecting. I had the brisket with potato salad and coleslaw and kind of opposite to the experience Jesse had. Um, mine was very tender, which was great. And that's what I'm looking for with brisket personally. Um, but at the same time, mine was also a bit, tasted a bit under seasoned. It could have done with a little bit more salt, I think as well. And I don't like having to rely on barbecue sauce for any of my like smoked meats to, to give it flavor. While it wasn't, it wasn't bad by any means. It was, um, it was good and I love brisket. So I was, I was happy with it. And then the potato salad was really good in my opinion. I'm a huge fan of potato salad and I thought it was really good. I told Jesse uh, it had a lot of onions, which I like in potato salad. So I was very happy with that. And then the coleslaw was good. It was a bit runnier than I like my coleslaw to be almost like soup consistency with all the liquid that gathered at the bottom but um, by no means was it bad or anything that was pretty good as well yeah and so she handed me like a piece of brisket to try and like she wasn't even holding on that tight but like i went to grab it and it was just like fell apart it was so tender yeah i know i i think the the cook on the brisket was really good it was and then after we ate we had a second round um i had the noble pilsner it was a pretty crisp and light drink, uh, but it was a little bit maltier than most Pilsners I have. I think it could have had a bit more hop character to it, like a little bit of hop bite to really round that round out that crispiness to it. It kind of drank more like an American lager, but it was still really tasty. Uh, good for a hot day kind of beer. And then for my second beer, I had the hands-on hazy IPA. It was a good IPA, um, and it was actually hazy, which Anywhere I go outside of the places, the breweries that we're comfortable with, I'm always just like scared that like when it says hazy IPA, it's not gonna be hazy. Um, so it was hazy, great. Check that off the list. Um, and then it, it was it was good. It was sweet, uh, which I told Jesse it gave me the tingling feeling in the back of my mouth, like in the back of my jaw, which Jesse was not really familiar with that feeling, but. Nope. Um, which I typically get with like sours and other sweet things that I'm drinking. So pretty on the sweeter side, but it was still good. I enjoyed it. Um, it kind of, so I really enjoyed both of my beers tonight that I had that I ordered. So I'm really happy with that. Okay, just so everyone knows, whenever you're trying to record something, your cat decides to just do something like just lick her food bowl. There's no food in there. She's just licking it loudly. Another thing I wanted to mention about Storm King too is that they have uh, a lot of good patio space. We went on a Saturday, so it was very busy, um, especially having good weather. Tons of people are out and about. So it was tough for us to find a spot outside originally but we ended up snagging one which was great because like jesse said the inside was so loud especially on a busy day like today um so there's plenty of seating outdoors there's picnic tables there's regular tables there's like little circles like little powwow circles you can sit in so there's lots of options there and uh as jesse kind of touched on in our intro it also is right next door to number 12 cider and they also have like a food truck at the time of recording this at least they have a food truck outside 
they had, it looked like, like lawn games, like bags, um, and all kinds of things. So you can kind of hit up a couple stops right there. And like Jesse said, there's also a few other breweries that are right in the immediate area. So it's definitely a, a good spot uh, if you're looking to kind of brewery hop or even just go to a bunch of different establishments that do like craft beer, cider, things like that. Yeah, number 12 is a, it's a gorgeous tap room and a uh, nice cider. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to do a video on that sometime. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, kind of the whole North Loop area, we should probably at some point do videos of since it's right by us. Oh, and we didn't have any while we were there, but just kind of a reminder, it is a brew pub, so they do have wine and cocktails. Uh, so it is a place that you can go with people who don't like beer. Um, cause even though there is a cidery next door, you can't bring the cider over that road. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching, commenting, liking, subscribing. Uh, we'll see you next time.